This is a rather interesting medical device and also a slightly squirmy medical device because its function is to couple onto dressings and apply negative pressure. It's got a little vacuum pump in it and it physically sucks your wounds. And I'm guessing the logic behind that is that if you apply negative pressure, it means that bacteria can't get into the wound. It's always going to ooze out the way and therefore it's going to stay sterile. And this was sent to me by Magnus from Sweden, who has a friend in the uh, medical industry who gets some random gadgets. And this is not working. You can put batteries in it, as I've done here. Let's see if I've got a... Let's use this, uh, let's use this screwdriver. Now, if I short out these batteries, which uh, is just basically bridging them as the lid does here, it's got metal contact in it. Watch the three LEDs here, and you'll see... Did you see them flash? It is active, but it's not running. It does not respond to the button at all. And I was thinking, oh, is that the medical industry doing what the medical industry does and putting expiry dates and things? And it turns out, yes, that's exactly what it is. But I suppose it's logical they do it because this is a single use negative pressure wound therapy device. It's made by Smith and Nephew. Nephew. And, uh, is, yeah, it's, it's all about, it gives a list of the type of wounds it could be used on and uh, the type of dressing with the sort of all the pores in it, the, the sort of dome that's designed to allow the pressure to be applied over the whole area. And I did find a data sheet online. And it's used from the manufacturer, but it's in microscopic text, the PDF file. And it mainly covers, you know, its application and the indication lights. There are three lights. One of them indicates a low battery. One of them indicates uh, that the pressure isn't being able to be drawn and that it suggests that maybe you've got two uh, dressings that are crossing each other and it's creating a small air channel and, and the other one is the low battery indicator and this is designed to operate for about a week um, and then that's it you know you can't use it after that I suppose the logic there is that you know it's going to be sucking impurities in you can't clean the pump you don't want to actually have the same unit being used over and over again although one week seems a bit mean you'd think it could be used a few times but uh, maybe that's all the time it's required to allow a wound to start healing and it, then it's done its job. They say it, you know, saves its money, saves its cost in the terms of the reduced number of readmissions with infected wounds, which sounds like a good thing. And I'm looking at the back of this and thinking, let's take the batteries out of it. It looks like uh, the label has been peeled off. I think Magnus is how we go at this because he's probably thought the exact same thing as I did and thought, let's see if it can be reset. So if you peel the label off, it exposes two screws in the back. And it's interesting that there's a window in the label uh, that matches up with this serial number. So they've got a small printed on serial number for the unit and then just a general label that goes over the top of it. So it's got these two screws. Not sure if it's clipped together as well. I'll find out when I've taken the screws out. I suppose in a sense that, you know, humans naturally tend to suck their wounds. I suppose, you know, if you cut yourself in an industrial environment, you'll tend to... Mm, suck it to actually get any dirt out of it. I think that's a natural thing, so maybe this thing has some uh, credentials in that aspect. It's not clipped together. Oh, it's quite a neat little circuit board. Let's get down close to this. So a little tactile switch here. It's got two of the uh, very low profile connectors. One for the pump. There's the pump underneath. Let's uh, lift that up. So there's a little vacuum pump with a motor on the end. Oh, and there's a little port onto a pressure sensor. That's quite sophisticated, so it is monitoring the pressure. Right, tell you what, I'm going to take a picture of this uh, so we can take a close look at the circuit board. So uh, I shall pause momentarily and be back in a moment. This is quite a sophisticated device. It does have a microcontroller, an ST microcontroller. It's got an ATL 151G, and the main feature of this processor is it's a general purpose microcontroller, but it's got a very low standby, well, operating current of 35 microamps. It's extremely low. And likewise, these chips here, V612AI, are uh, op amps, I think they're dual op amps, and again they're super low current, 10 microamps standby. I wonder why there's two. There's the pressure sensor, PPO2AYKP, and I'm guessing that uh, it's just a differential thing, and that's this one of these op amps is coupled to that. I wonder what the other one's for. Could the other one be for monitoring battery voltage? There is a, a DAB 
RBP chip here. And I'm wondering if that is maybe battery monitoring, and maybe maybe a really low current voltage regulator. You wouldn't think there's much scope, given it's only three volts, you wouldn't think there's much scope to regulate the voltage down much. We've got, uh, at the pump, we've got a couple of transistors. I wonder if they're being used as a Darlington to actually buffer the uh, output from the microcontroller uh, to switch the pump. There's a snubber diode across the pump. And then, I'm not sure what this is, Z17U. I took a look for some of these components. I could find the main ones, but I couldn't find the DAB RBP one. Uh, it's probably just, you know, a, it's a short code for a more sophisticated, uh, you know, a much longer number. But uh, when you've got the power spike, I mean, you've got an inductor, you've got various capacitors, you've got a kind of fuse built onto the circuit board, plus they've got an auxiliary fuse, a little surface mount fuse by the look of it. Uh, the smoothing, decoupling, and that's ultimately it. You know, it's down to a couple of op amps, uh, the pressure sensor to maintain the pressure at a constant level. And the microcontroller will do things, but well, one of the things it will do is control the lifespan of the unit. In here, you've got uh, the flash memory for the program. You've got the RAM for temporary storage of variables. It probably uses that to monitor things like if the it's managing to pull a vacuum or not, and if it exceeds a certain time uh, pulling the vacuum, uh, trying to pull the vacuum, then it starts flashing the error light that shows that the uh, that it's not managing to pull that vacuum. Uh, and the other thing it's got, and the more important thing, is EEPROM. It's got the uh, memory that it can actually modify, and that means it's updating a little counter in here, and it's timing the unit out. It's basically timing how long the unit's used. So the lockout is actually in here, uh, as far as I can see. And the only way you could actually reset that is if you could put that into a programmer, if they hadn't blocked the uh, the access to the EEPROM memory, you could then look to see which variable was changing or reset it to, uh, to its base values and see if that uh, reset the unit. But that's not easy. If they've... Uh, locked that chip, which they usually do with the program and the EEPROM, then you can actually read the data back out it from the programming pins. It's strictly in, inside after that. So it's really what you would expect. You know, it's not too sophisticated. I will say it seems an awful waste for something that gets used briefly, but I suppose if it saves a wound getting infected and it's got that sort of sterile, disposable hospital hygiene thing going on, then it's a... Uh, it's serving its function. The pump is quite interesting. Shall we Shall we power the pump? Yes, we'll power the pump. Let's uh, give it about two volts, do you reckon? I'm just going to get the power supply running here. A friend is saying, oh no, it's medical equipment. Don't touch it. It's unsterile. Yeah, I'm not bothered. I'm very unlikely to get some disease from it. Oh, you know, I was actually trying to pull the vacuum there, but of course it's got the extra port. Let's see uh, how much it... Oh yeah, it pulls quite a modest vacuum. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Nice little pump. So yeah, it's an interesting medical piece of apparatus. Um, but just such a shame, you know. I could imagine that the equivalent thing from China would be a lot simpler, probably. Um, and a lot cheaper. It would probably be £10 inclusive of shipping. Goodness knows how much something like this costs from a company like, uh, like, uh, what's their, what's their name again? Uh, Smith & Nephew. Pico. Single-use negative pressure wound therapy system. But yeah, it's an interesting device. So uh, certainly worth taking apart and taking a look at. But as I say, it just seems a wee bit wasteful. And if you enjoy videos like this, remember to click the subscribe button. I'm saying that on every video at the moment because I, I'm just doing an experiment to see do people actually respond to that? Because I know a lot of people watch some of my videos and then they say, oh no, I wish I'd watch, you know, I wish I'd click the subscribe button. I've been missing all these other videos. So I guess people do occasionally do that. And look at this component here. I've just found something else. I really need to explore that. Where's a knife? What is that? Is that a little inductor perhaps? Is it a fuse? Let's make a small incision on this glue-lined heat shrink by the look of it. And see if I can open that and see what's inside. 
That is all glued up. Tell you what, one moment, I'm just going to open that. It's marked 630 milliamp. Could that be another tiny little inline fuse? God, they must be paranoid. They've got the circuit board fuse, they've got the little onboard surface mount fuse, and then this. Unless it's an inductor that and that's its maximum current rating, but you wouldn't expect to see 60, 630 milliamp printed on inductor. That's quite odd. I wonder what that is. 630 milliamp ALE. Very strange. Er, milliamp LE. Very strange, or LF. Yeah, strange. I'm guessing it's just another fuse. They're just playing absolutely safe, just in case something goes horribly wrong. But yeah, interesting device.